Welcome to the Alphaman Podcast, hosted by Stephen Goldstein and Mark Randall. The podcast which is always looking to help traders, whether they're new to the game or whether they are seasoned and experienced traders, explore how they can be better, more productive, more effective traders by looking at the human aspects of trading performance. Long-term listeners of the Alphaman Podcast will be aware that we have a fantastic relationship with our podcast sponsor, the Society of Technical Analysts, the STA. Now, this year in April, they will be having their second Technicals to Trading Systems one-day conference coming up in London. Their first one was last year, and it was a brilliant event with some incredible speakers, as well as a great chance for attendees to talk with, meet, and network with traders from all walks. So this year they are doing it again on the 16th of April. It's a one-day event in London. They have a superb lineup of speakers, including brilliant and legendary Linda Rashke. Uh, you can find out more about this event by going to their website, technicalanalysts.com, or just Google Society of Technical Analysts, and that'll get you to their website. Also, as a reminder, we are proud to promote the Society of Technical Analysts brilliant home study course, which we think is the best way to really get a deep and immersive understanding and learning experience around technical analysis. We do offer a £100 discount uh, through the AlphaMind uh, website. So just go to our website, alpha-mind.net, and you'll find details on there. Now, on with this week's podcast. Well, welcome to this week's uh, AlphaMind podcast. And I'm, I'm delighted to have with me on the show the, the one and only Steve Goldstein my uh, co-host of the uh, podcast and, uh, of course, co- co-creator, co-founder of the Alpha Mind Project and, and all that's associated with that. And the reason that Steve's on this week is that Steve, after many years, has managed to get his book completed and now launched. And it's um, a book that suits and fits, of course, the, the whole trading environment that we talk about and the challenges within it and the opportunity within it um, that are very much part of the way these podcasts have evolved. And, of course, the the book is out on multiple channels. It's called Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. Steve Goldstein, the author, best-selling author, I think, from uh, from what I understand. But so we just wanted to have a chat about it, and I think... Um, so he's probably not, it doesn't be so, no surprise, Stephen, that my, my first question is going to be, why? You know, what's, what, what's the purpose for it? With so many books on the market about trading and trading psychology and trading methodology and blah, 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 blah. Why did you think you needed to write a book about it from your perspective? Okay. Um, oh, it's a... <laughs> It's a great question, isn't it? I um, I'll be honest. I, I thought, well, first of all, I was approached, which uh, which kind of catalyzed it. But I think I'd had it in the back of my mind that I felt I had things to say, that I'd been through experiences, um, that I felt were really useful for other people to hear, um, as a trader. Um, so the idea came to me a long time ago, well before I really got into my um my coaching, my performance coaching business. So I had 24 years as a trader, nearly 25, uh, professional trader. So, and I went through a lot of different experiences. I went through a coaching experiences, uh, a coaching experience as well, which had a huge transformational effect on me about halfway through my career. Um, and, and, and I'd always studied the psychology. I'd loved the psychology of this job. I always felt it was more psychological than it was um, intellectual. And uh, and then when I started working as a coach and I went through this journey um, as a coach, learning about coaching, learning different coaching methods, learning uh, about some of the psychology of high performance, uh, but from a slightly different perspective, um, through a certain lens that is more psychothera- uh, psychotherapeutic. And it, I applied a lot of that into the work I was doing as a coach, realizing how relevant it was. Um, because th- this job is often just a series of, of personal traumas. 
and um and that really resonated with people with the work i was doing and and it was forming a model it was almost like there was a lot going on as a whirlwind forming a model but i, I think more than anything there was a part of me that felt i wanted to write a book for the underdog okay i've always been i suppose like most people in a way always been attracted to the underdog always felt i was a bit of an underdog myself um and uh and this job is so hard you know the chance of success of, of, of sustained success in in trading is incredibly low and yet you know anyone can do it anyone can succeed at trading um the fact that very few do tells you how difficult it is um and like i say you know we talk about it in the book that the odds are stacked against you to such a high degree you know if i can help people stack the odds in their favor and come through as, as the underdog i i'm you know i i feel i'm achieving something you know i get enormous pleasure from coaching people uh, and seeing it transform their careers and their approach to their work so so there was a bit of that in there as well i really felt i could add something new to the conversation yeah, it's interesting. Whenever we spoke about why we're in this space, I think we both concluded between us that we just like to help people. Um, yeah. And that yeah. willingness to help, you know, that being bothered to help. It's actually part of your, you know, the way that you story told your way through this book is about being bothered to actually just get organized to want to help people in a very structured way that follows a certain pathway um which i think is done hugely successfully within the way the story builds so if we perhaps look at the the early chapters of the book how did you start to position the book in terms of you know wanting people to get engaged with it to then you know throw themselves at the detail that was coming um as the book evolved okay well y you know one of the things, and uh, this is also useful for anyone planning to write a book uh, or thinking about it, um, there was probably more time planning the book than actually writing it. And I wouldn't have, wouldn't have known that if it had not been for the publisher. The publisher was brilliant, Harriman House, and uh, particularly the uh, the lead on that, Craig Pierce uh, from Harriman House. He, he, he approached me um some four years before i even wrote, started writing it um because well, hats off to steve ward here he, they published steve ward's book high performance trading and it'd been such a, a great success for them that they felt they wanted to try and um do another get another couple of books in their stable on the performance side of trading they were a financial market uh publisher um and uh it, you know, they obviously didn't want a repeat of that. They, they they wanted something different, so they guided me towards towards it, and then they guided me through the um, the process to 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 plan the book, which is part of the application process, part of putting the proposal in. Um, and that, that really, I mean, they, they tell you how to write the, the chapters, how to plan the chapters. So you have to plan every single chapter before you put it in for the proposal. And they very cleverly, without me even realizing it help me refine the book but it also helped that i had this um performance model which which you're very familiar mark because um we both uh run workshops around this model together um and you've actually done a lot to help me evolve it so that it's become even even more robust but it was this model which i took from uh from the world of uh gestalt psychotherapy and then have adapted and applied into the world of um performance coaching for traders and that they suggested that that model could become the framework for the book craig suggested that could become the the model around which the book is formed as a structure and and it's worked beautifully and it's the model the framework that model is even on the on the front page of the book um so it really helped with the flow of the book as well as being what is a great framework for developing your performance itself no, no, thank, thank you for those kind words. And yes, I think uh, 
yeah, we found that in, in, in the upper echelons of, you know, some of the biggest trading teams on the planet, this stuff resonates so well. But you mentioned a little bit ago about it being, you, know, you wanted it to be for the underdog, um, you know, and, and and perhaps that that is a question is, who do you think that it's actually aimed at um, in terms of readership? I, I kind of know the answer, but I want you to just you know, go into that a little bit. Okay, so well, the main money is obviously traders. Um, the overwhelming majority of traders are the, in the retail trading space, um, but it's also aimed at professional traders, uh, investors, professional investors, retail investors alike. Um, but it's also aimed beyond that. It, it's aimed at people in general. So although, and, and the publisher recognised this, it, it, and a few people have said this to me already, it's about high performance in whatever you're doing in life, you know, um, whether it's trading or investing, but whether it's sport, whether it's music, whether it's leadership, entrepreneurship, sales. Um, the, 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 the essential message of the book is that trading is a performance activity, um, but any performance activity could be, could be um, uh, replaced trading could be replaced for. And, and the big battle we always face in any performance activity is the battle with ourself, our self relationship, the challenge we face when we're engaging in something. Um, and, and I think every person on the planet has that challenge. And if you can improve that, if you can work on that, if you can cope better with the, um, the ego issues which result from that, um, you're going to be able to perform better. You're going to be able to execute your processes better. Um, you're going to be able to recover better. You're going to be able to apply yourself better. So that, that those are the essential message of the book. So it is for anyone, but naturally it's for people doing this this damn hard job of trading. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I've actually spoke to someone, one of my friends who, actually got a copy of the book and, and read it. Um, and when I spoke to him the other day, he said, so have you guys ever thought about Formula One? <laughs> you know, so he was saying that, you know, that this is, you know, this, you pick, pick this stuff up and take it into sport. You know, for all of the hours of the week we've got available for that. Um, but it, it, it has that potential. Um, and I think that the, um, you know, you, you can, you can almost delete the word trading um, and it would still make total sense for anyone doing anything in what we consider to be high performance environments that have got a lot of unpredictability and uncertainty and actually have got some some degree of stress that goes with it, which, you know, work into the world of trading. McLaren aren't too far away from us in this part of England, so uh, <laughs> maybe we'll get... <laughs> I know. I know. You never know. You never know. It's... Um, I think they, we deserve them and they deserve us. But I think we've got a lot of interesting <laughs> clients as it stands. Um, Let's put it out I there. Want to just anyone's listening the, from the world of Formula One. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Formula One, we're here. Alpha Mind, check us out. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we will make a difference. I, mean, I guess know that we'll make a difference. Now, I want to just go, go into the, the book. And, of course, you've said about the challenges of tra trading. But having been with you on a lot of this journey, you know, the challenges of writing the book were, were not small either. Um, and you must have had a chapter that you were particularly proud about, a chapter that, guess, you know, like came up, well, was it fell, fell off the tongue? Is that the right phrase? It, it was just an it was just easy chapter to write. Was there a chapter like that? It, I don't know what it represents. You could say, oh, well, the whole book was like that, but you probably had a part of it that you guess thought, yeah, that's a really special part of the book for me. Well, actually, it's it's the second half of the book I'm, I'm much more proud of. And uh, um, it, it's quite interesting. And I don't know if anyone else who's written a book has ever said this, but the, 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 the first half, I've actually got this part of me, which thinks I hope people get through the first quarter of the book and stay with it to the later stages. 
because uh, you know I, I i'm a bit like when i read a book if i if i don't get into it in the first or second chapter you know it goes back on the shelf and probably never read again um and i felt that when i wrote it that the, the early stages were a little bit heavy at times and, and messed up um and, and i i tore them up a few times and started again um and i got into a little bit of a mess with it um but the second half of the book or, or the, in fact i would say the second and third thirds of the book they just flowed i think i wrote the last two thirds of the book in about two months and i think the previous third of the book took about a year um which probably gives you a sense of of where i'm going with this um and and do i have a chapter i i have a best one do you know what i, I it's really weird i don't okay but when i was doing the edit because the the the, the, the final two months of writing was about the final two thirds of the book. I went through it so quickly and did it so much on autopilot. Um, and it was pre-planned, of course, so I had a structure and I had a what I was gonna write in each chapter. But I, I didn't look at it properly until I did the edit and I went, I was reading it and I was going, this is really good. I'm enjoying this as if I was reading somebody else's book. Um, yeah. And and there were bits where did I actually write that? This is fascinating. <laughs> so yeah, it was really bizarre. <laughs> um, I, I'm really pleased with the ending of the book, the, the, the sort of second and third thirds, and I'm, I, I do just hope people stay with it past the first third. Yeah, I think it's it's a wholesome story. I think uh, yeah, you you need to read it to the end to to get the complete picture. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. Um. As you were going through the process, and some of it would have been recollection, some of it the application of obviously what we've talked about in terms of the modelling. But did you did any surprises turn up in terms of the way were you sort of learning as you went? And did you suddenly come across something you think, oh, I've not thought about that before, and actually I'm going to write a story about that? Did anything come from that process of, of recollection and, and building a structure? Where you suddenly think, I've got some more material here that I hadn't realised. Um, like an epiphany, like sort of thing. Oh my god, I just that's something else for me to talk about because I'm all this information is now coming together in this process. Okay, um, it, it was more really that you know the, the experiences. You know, I, I was doing this whilst writing, um, whilst working, whilst delivering coaching, and as you know, well, delivering workshops for you all over the world um by the way i recall you probably remember that uh when we had the jet lag in singapore um yeah i was up writing the book all night because i couldn't sleep That's hoping it would send time. me to sleep and it never <laughs> and you probably remember i think you said one day we were delivering the workshops steve you're, you don't seem to be functioning this afternoon yeah i hadn't slept was, was that was that the time where you thought i'd died was that, no, that, the was, that, was, that, that because... was the next day for you. I'd caught up on my jet lag by then. You were a couple of days behind me. <laughs> 14 hours sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 14 hours sleep in one go. Yeah. I had to get dressed and changed in about two minutes to then head to the time. So that was, uh, <laughs> anyway, that was a day and a half. Yeah. Anyway, back to the question. Yeah. So so we, we've been doing this work together. I've been doing the work, the coaching I do with my private clients. Um, and of course, naturally I, I i'm really in tune with some of the conversations i'm having with people as i happen to be writing a story about it so i could literally say they were bringing up a, a topic or a theme or an issue and i'm bringing into the conversation i am literally writing a chapter about that right now and it fuels the content mm -hmm. of the chapter so i went back obviously yeah, i yeah. didn't tell their story but it meant that some of the stories in the book and i you you I, I tell a lot of stories in the book based off influences from clients. Um, and uh, normally most of them with it, with one or two exceptions are an amalgamation of clients. Cause obviously I have to keep the client anonymous. I have to respect their confidentiality. Um, I have to respect their, uh, uh, their confidentiality around what they do and where they work. So I, I often change the, uh, you know, the, who that person was, where they were, what they were doing, where they were in the world and i always told people listen i can i use if i'm using a really explicit part of their story 
is it okay to use that? And again, they've always said yes, as long as it's anonymous. But that, those stories were live in real time as as I was writing the book on that topic. And it just meant that, they're, you know, if you if you read it, it felt like they were happening in real time, those stories, and they were yeah, like in, rich, in the book. In rich. Yeah, yeah. I mean, remember, I'm, I'm right. So much happened during the period that I was writing this book. You know, I started planning it in 2020. Um, the, 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 the final chapters of the book were written literally on the 31st of December, 2022. Um, and then we edited it so I could add a few bits or update a few bits in early 2023. Three of the most dramatic years in the markets ever. You know, year one COVID. Um, and of course, we've had that roaring bull market in in crypto and in uh, in equities. Uh, then we had the kind of collapse the next year. Uh, we've had the Russian war. We've had the energy markets. We've had the return of macro with, you know, inflation roaring back onto the scene, yields exploding everywhere. Some great big moves in foreign exchange, particularly against the uh, the yen. Um, every single market has been extraordinary during that time. So I think that all this action gave a richness to the stories as well. And you see, I, I, I tell some stories in there, um, which I, I again, I, you know, I slightly um, uh, hid the story, but there were stories about real Bitcoin traders that I was working with, um, real foreign exchange traders, um, real equity traders. I probably leaned a bit more towards foreign exchange in the book than any other uh, angles, just because my background is is FX and rates and those markets. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it really, I mean, it, it was an incredible three years during the time of the, probably the richest three years in the history of the markets as I was writing the book. No, brilliant. And um, if you can get to think about your, your, your book uh, and just think about the consistency of some of the messages in that book. Um, from your perspective, what, what are the key messages you're trying to put across to, to the reader from, you know, if, you, if people are listening and thinking, oh, well, okay, well, why am I going to read this book? What, 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 what perhaps three key messages do you think are in there that actually sum up why someone needs to read this book if they're on that journey? Well, the, 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 first, message, the, the first message and the core message is it's not the markets that we conquer, it's ourselves. Um, and that's an adaption mm -hmm. of a, a very famous quote um, attributed to Sir Edmund Hillary, who said, it's not the mountain we conquer, it's ourself. That it's all our own fears, our own um, uh, uh, anxieties, our own desires, our own expectations, um, our own disappointments. Uh, you know, everything we bring with us from our background, you know, everyone has, everyone has a challenged relationship with themselves in some way. Um, and you know at the core of this job you know you you're you know a, a second theme i would say about it is that you know that really the, the technical side of the job isn't that difficult and and we know that because people learn the tra the job and then they do something like paper trading or going on a simulation okay and they do pretty good at it okay and then they trade it for real and the only difference is that it's real money, it's real risk, it's real expectations. Uh, and I, I, I use that tightrope analogy, you know, in, in the book of, you know, of how if you walk across, maybe not a tightrope, but a four inch beam, when it's six inches off the floor, we can do it with our eyes shut. Put that same six inch beam 200 feet in the air, and we freeze before even stepping on it. Um, and, and the journey of crossing it is so much harder. And, and that's the stuff that's going in the head. That's the performance mindset. So there's a third point that trading it, or the second point, I think trading is really a performance activity. Um, and we have all that stuff going on within us. And then the third thing is this, uh, uh, the other framework I introduce in it, which is really more context than what the book is about. But there's two approaches, the idea that most people don't really understand trading. They're just doing it. 
you know, even people I know who I've talked to this, talked to, have been doing this for 30 years. I, I was doing the job for 25 years and this hadn't really occurred to me. I think I implicitly knew it, that there's, there's two types of trading, okay? There's not one type, it's two different jobs. Uh, and the analogy that works with that is the blackjack table, where you either are acting as a as a um, as a trader like the house, like a dealer, where you you have a marginal wedge that you have to monetize that, and that dictates the style of trading you're doing. So a scalper would be like that, or someone using a mean reversion um, approach, or even a systematic many systematic approaches. And then there's people the other side of the table who are like the um, the players walking up to them. And most of them are gamblers. They're not going to win. But that player who can become the gamer, who can find a way to create a positive expectancy as he walks up to the blackjack table, and the, the analogy there is card counting, um, if they can find something which helps them do that, they then have to be able to get a, to, to sort of monetize that, to make it work, because it's incredibly hard. But that's the other side of it. To think that trading is really, everything fits into one of these two different categories and that therefore understanding it and therefore having a process that aligns correctly with that both a, a physical process and a psychological process is really key so that's contextual i don't know if i've done more than three things there but i think it was three i think one was <laughs> it's this battle it was three. it's your battle against yourself two that it's a performance activity and the nature of performance changes the way we do it and then three, that there's this contextual element to trading um, that perhaps people aren't aware of when they're doing the job, um, which is why, and I'm going to put something quite controversial out there, um, uh, which is which is that there's not always, you don't always have to use a stop. Now, sometimes I get people aiming guns at my head when I say that, um, but the other time you always have to use a stop, okay? And But it depends which which approach you're doing. That's why both of these statements are correct. You you shouldn't use a stop and you should use a stop. Okay. Both are right, but it depends on the context. Yeah, it's a multi-layered complex business, right? There are all sorts of there's you know, there's the simplicities of trading, but there are people trading curves and and different surfaces and you know, um and I'm sure that the uh, the model um doesn't stop where you've described it because as even as we've continued our discussions around the programs we develop you know the when we first began um very very different to some of the conversations and the material that we're putting forward that we're delivering now which perhaps leads me on to the question about having read your book yourself <laughs> as, as it were in the sort of full editor editorial where it's all come together. Um, did you think, Christ, there's a few things that are missing here because our conversation and my thinking's evolved. Um, I need to do another book. <laughs> yeah, you must have had that thought. It, well, I need to revise it already. And I, I, I spoke to a few authors because I, I was part of a writing group, which also really helped. I had a brilliant um, book coach as I did the book. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I would rewrite the first third of it. <laughs> I, I think at times I, I got it a little bit, I, I, I didn't have the clarity I wanted. Um, secondly, some of my thinking has, has moved on, uh, particularly around the two approaches model. Um, there's some things in there which I think I, would, I wouldn't have written the way I did, or I would explain with greater clarity. And um, I, 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 hope, uh, I hope it doesn't come across like that. But, uh, you know, that the, there's things, you know, we're, I think our thoughts are always evolving, always changing. So th there's definitely that aspect of it. Um, I think the performance process cycle, and again, you know, the work me and you have done, um, the stuff I wrote about the pro performance process cycle predated the workshops that, that me and you gave, um, have given over the past, uh, past 18 months. Um, so there's been a lot that I've learned about that framework through the work we've done that I probably didn't have then. So my thinking around that has evolved. Um, and then also there is a new model 
which never made it into the book because it's really emerged over the last year. There's a couple of subtle references in it, um, but that would definitely be in it now. And you, I think I've mentioned it to you, the, the great good Ford model, um, yeah. really, which is about going to where you're great. The core message of that is in the book, but, you know, finding what you're great at and then really leveraging that and building upon it. Um, but it's a lot more developed, my thinking, around that now. Yeah, although I'd say, though, that anyone looking looking better themselves would 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 start off with, okay, I have found something that I, I'm good at, want to get better at it, and thus I, I want to dip into this this book. And, I mean, I wouldn't... It, it's not a self-help book, is it? It's It's... it's, it's We'll return to the podcast shortly. First, a few words about our podcast sponsor, the Society of Technical Analysts and the brilliant home study course. Now, there's many ways to learn technical analysis. You can read books about it. You can watch short YouTube videos about it. But there's nothing quite like learning it from the leading experts. And that's what this course is all about. It's been developed and brought to you by the Society of Technical Analysts, which are a non-profit organisation and have been going for over 50 years. And they run a brilliant diploma program. Program. And that program has been devised by some of the best technical analysts in the world. Now, if you're serious about learning about price action methods and how they can help you become a better trader or someone who uses price action methods to devise and build systems, then this course is what you want. If you want to learn about analysis, technical analysis that is, or price action methods from a five minute YouTube video put together by someone who's probably never done the job for a living, that's fine. Go knock yourself out. But if you're serious about learning about technical analysts give this course a check out you can go to the sta website technicalanalyst.com or you can go to our website alpha-mind.net and you can have a look at the course on there and if you do it through us there is a 100 pound sterling discount on the full cost of the course now the course isn't cheap but that's because it is a proper course anyway i'll leave it up to you now back to the podcast did you see it as a, as, a, as a guide, as sort of a sort of a, a, a partner for someone, to, as a reference point, as they as they just go on their journey? So it's a point of reference that they can look back to and, and get ideas from, and maybe even make notes. In. You know, it's interesting because I, I think in a way it is a bit of a self help book. Um, uh, you know, I, I took a, a lot of inspiration from a lot of books. Um, some aren't self-help, but one one of them, or probably my initial inspiration, was a book called The Inner Game of Tennis by uh, Tim Galway. And you will see some sort of references to his theories and thinking in the book. Um, another book that heavily influenced me, um, and I do take one of the models from there and talk about another one, it is... Um, uh, <laughs> it's a it's just escaped me for a second. Um, my thinking's a bit foggy. It's Friday afternoon. Um, seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Okay. Brilliant yeah. book. Um, I, I read it about a decade ago. And I talked about it with a lot of people in the markets, a lot of people in, you know, in, in professional trading thinking, I, how come I'd never come across this book before? And, and then hardly anyone I know in the financial markets or the investment world knows of this book. And yet in the world of business, it's one of the biggest selling books of, of all time. Uh, and there is so much relevance to, to you and bringing the best of yourself to this job and trying to get better at it. Um, and uh, so, so I took a lot of inspiration from that. Uh, and then I've taken from lots of different books. The Psychology of Money was a big book. And I talk about Morgan Housel in there. Uh, and I, I, I use a couple of references of his. Uh, the work of Nassim Taleb was another huge influence. Uh, also, Annie Duke. You know, so so there's, there's lots of different books. You know, Steve Ward's book. You know, his writing, Denise Show. That all these people in, in some way have contributed you know, to my thinking that's gone into this book, even if there's not a direct reference to it. And I think that's always the way, you know, um, with these sort of books. Obviously, my, my studies in Gestalt therapy, um, which I talk about sometimes in the book and the teachers I've had on that, um, 
play a very big part. And of course, things we've spoken about um, during our, our work together, you know, and things I've taken from our brilliant guests on the podcast over many years. Gary Klein's another one, a psychologist, um, but certain traders, you know, certain people have been very influential on the show. Um, you know, Jack Schrager, he's, he's had a huge impact um, on me over the years. Ed Sequoita, um, who gets almost his own chapter, or at least his quote that was featured in the first um, uh, Jack Schrager um, Market Wizards book. That actually, that quote gets its own chapter. And in fact, if I'm going to say, is there a chapter that I'm really proud about? It is that one. Hmm. So everybody gets what they want from the market. Yeah, it's interesting how these these worlds of all these thought leaders as it were in a space sort of overlap, you know, in, in certain places. And I think so there's perhaps some familiarity in places of your book as good as, as as useful reminders of what other people are thinking that you brought together as this sort of curated piece of work. That's, that that becomes a reference point for people, you know, um, no matter how they either trade the market or, or whatever they're looking to perform in. It's just a useful reminder of the various storylines that are there, I guess, to inspire you to, to guess, do better. And, but actually, from the sense of starting with yourself, you know, that very deep, Seated, um, can I, question about you know, can how, I, how am I am I good enough? Can I can I add to, to yeah? Can I add something? Journey. Can I add something? Because I, I you know at risk of making this a bit That's, of a yeah. loving, okay. Um, you know what we've done at Alpha Mind together has been a big influence on on my writing and the book and my thinking. You know, we sat down, we got introduced together in, I think it was twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen. And we sat down and we just realized that we both got the same goals, the same purpose. We like helping people. Uh -huh. um, we have a, a very similar thought process around, you know, what we talk about. We do come from slightly different traditions, but we've both been in the markets for perhaps a little bit too long. <laughs> and, and um, you know, a, a lot of that stuff led to, you know, the, this podcast we get, you know, myself and yourself get messages every week from people thanking us for doing this, you know, and um, and, and we give up our time to do this. You know, it's, uh, it's something we love doing. We love, you know, helping the underdog a little bit and other people out there. Um, and I think there's that, like you say, that same message through the book as we do in our work, you know, as we do when we go into organisations as well which is to try and bring some sort of clarity, some way of navigating the fog, both individuals and, and businesses, because it is, it is a foggy world out there. Yeah, and I think uh, that's, I think we do need to sort of congratulate ourselves on, on, on that journey um, of, of defining what it meant and then actually having you know, having, having people trusting us to deliver it. Yeah. And, and then to deliver it in a way that's been so meaningful that you get invited back and we have some very strategic relationships Yeah, uh, as a consequence of, you know, our, com our combined thinking. And, um, yeah, no, it, it, it's super interesting. And, and perhaps as we sort of get close to sort of coming to the end of this podcast, I mean, the question I ask you is, well, okay, you've done the book. It's out there. Okay, Alpha, Alpha Mind's ongoing. That's kind of in parallel. But having done the book, what's next? Mm. Um, well, my wife would not let me write a second book. <laughs> <laughs> She's banned it, although there might be a slightly revised version of it. Um, you know, the feedback and you know, that we've got is that, you know, people are really hungry to find ways to learn how to do this job. Um, yeah. We've spoken, myself and, and you, about doing some sort of program um, around the ideas and concepts that we, we've been delivering inside organisations, some of the biggest 
investment banks and commodity trading firms and hedge funds in the world um, to a perhaps wider um, retail audience. Um, I think that's, you know, the, the, there's a really key message here. Um, and uh, I, I think that's it. I think it's sort of, I don't want to use the term educating because that, that's infantizing slightly. Um, but I, I think uh, um, yeah, bringing these sorts of messages that that are in the book, that are in our work to a wider audience, that give them a chance to um, improve their chances of, of success uh, and, and being a little bit more relaxed and calmer and resilient too when they do it. Yeah, and, and I would agree. I think that's our collective next is certainly with some of the conversations we're, we're having sort of in, in real time. Um, I'll sort of point in that way beyond, you know, normal big strategic pieces for, you know, pro proper sort of trading partners. I think there is this, and, and perhaps some of the messaging we've had also from from either, either our, our work in general with the podcasts or your book, it's quite clear that, that there's an awful lot of people that are at the very early stages of coming into markets that are hungry for more, for, 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 to build a better base. Yeah. A lot of people feel as though they're just not the right base to launch from. And I think in a way what we're doing is um, you know, look, looking at potential products and services um, that help that give people a chance of having a go at this kind of stuff from a very very sound base um you know to flourish from to survive from because we all know it's going to be painful at times um and so i think that that to me that's kind of what's next it's you know it's it's broadening the message and getting it more out there for a a, a bigger population globally um that's what next so, right. so brilliant. I think it's, it's a nice little sort of journey through the what and the why and the purpose and, the, and a bit of a sense of content because we don't want to give too much away because, of course, we want people to read the book, um, buy the book. So the, as we end, the question is, where can they get hold of a copy? Um, where do they go to find this? Um, just repeat the name of it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's Mastering the Mental Game of Trading and it's available on... Well, all all book sites, all booksellers, uh, Amazon.com, Amazon UK, um, obviously various local um, booksellers. It's not available yet in Audible, but it will be possibly in the next week or two. It's available in Kindle form. It will be available, from what I gather, in some uh, some overseas publishers have bought the rights to it already, and. Um, and they're, uh, you know, they're, 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 we hope to have it published in uh, in some foreign languages later this year. And I know the publishers are also talking about, um, you know, with, with local publishers, because obviously in some countries, um, the, the, the English version is priced a little bit more expensive expensively than uh than perhaps a local version would be so i think they're talking to some local publishers about um doing local versions um for example india is one of those countries um but there's a lot of interest coming all over the world fantastic I, I, in a way you must be relieved <laughs> um so much uh, that is the question isn't it you think i've, I've done this all i need now is just for people to go and buy it uh yeah yeah it's it's been a long journey uh it's been fascinating um and uh you know I, I love this topic this theme i've been in the markets for years i've been there i've been that trader i've i've struggled um i fought back i overcame some of those struggles and then i've you know i found uh a path to success which is reflected in the book hopefully um success from the human part rather than you know i don't focus on on the technical side of trading um i do talk about some of my trades in the book but i, I don't really go in depth into what what sort of um drove my trading um 
I'm very clear on that at the start of the book. It's not a technical book. Fabulous. Well, everyone, so there you go. There's a, there's a book to add to your bookshelf, to your Kindle or whatever way you ask. You want to uh, either read this or listen to this. So uh, do check it out. Mastering the Mental Game of Trading by Steve Goldstein. As usual, Stephen, been a pleasure. And for the moment, we wish you all very best of luck uh, and good health as this year progresses. Thank you. Bye-bye now. It's been great being a guest. Thank you for listening to the Alphaman podcast today. We also want to extend a thank you to our podcast sponsor, the Society of Technical Analysts. Do check out their brilliant home study course, and you can see more about that at our website, alpha-mind.net. And of course, if you're keen to know more about how Alpha Mind can help you, please do also look up um, further details of our services on our website or reach out to us at info at alpha-mind.net. That just leaves us to say thank you and we wish you the best of luck in the weeks ahead.